All right, so here's just going to be another quick guide. I stopped using uh, one of the uh, default uh, load generators and decided to switch over to uh, the dynamic distant objects loading. Uh, basically, dyno load is what most people in the community call it. And you can see basically in the picture, all it does is adds more detail to the distant background by making things more accurate to what they would be in the game. Of course, how accurate it's going to be is depending on how much your VRAM is because all you're doing is stacking things up. You can see waterfalls get added, more rocks get added, more texture, how high quality is the texture, the things in the background, details on the mountains, these all get improved. So there's a whole bunch to learn about this mod. And the easiest way to probably think about it is Dino Lod comes in two parts. You have, of course, the resources. So this is required if you're getting ESE, mod manager this, install, enable, and make sure you have this in and make sure that it's only being overridden by other mods that are load textures. It should, mod manager should tell you if it conflicts and suggest where it should go. This is a fairly popular mod. Of course, you have the manual download. So this guy cannot be installed with the mod manager fully. Of course, it's resources that you need as textures and other messages get downloaded with the mod manager fine. But to run the tools, you're gonna need to click on manual download. We click on that, it starts to download. You go free, I already have a download. So I'm just gonna switch over to my other screen here and go into downloads so you just go you extract it now at this point you have it extracted this is the tricky part because if you try and run this or if you try and put this in your Skyrim data folder or do anything with it right now it's in a state where it won't work if you're on special edition or if you're on VR if you're on normal edition of Skyrim it should just work but we're gonna take this bad boy so I copy it here and what you're going to want to do is the spot where you're actually going to want to run this is go to one of your drives and just make a spot for it on one of your drives because if you try and put it anywhere near your game or anywhere near your game files it will get very mad it doesn't like anything it just basically wants a spot where there's no permissions or anything stopping it from running so that's why I prefer just on the drive. So nothing, not in any folders, not behind anything. If it would be here, it would be just another folder here. So now that we've got this, we go on to the next tricky step. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on this after you select it and create shortcut. And once you create the shortcut, you click properties on it. Now, depending on what version of Skyrim you have is what you put here. So you can see it's space dash SSE and I just apply and save that for the basically for the special edition if you had say for example um, VR you would have TES 5 VR of course all this information is available in the, the document files you can go to the quick start to learn about more about that you can go into the edit scripts there's there's a lot of text to learn about this but we're just getting this started so it's easier at the start. Of course, you're going to want to do the same thing for text gen. Click on it, right click, create shortcut, then left click, right click, and then on this one, properties, and then you're also going to want to add that little appendix. So you got two things now. You should have one for the normal EXE and one for the text gen. So what it means by text gen is texture generation. So if you have mods or if you have anything that's beyond the distant uh, low textures that you've added in, such as tree textures, or you've added your own resource packs, you want to click on this. This guy gives you a few options once he gets up and going. Hopefully it doesn't glitch out my audio. The Nemesis one did that, I remember. So it's going to load up all your uh, mods and all your files. And now you can see we have a few options here. A little bit tricky because the window is a bit small, but there's an option essentially from 64 all the way to 4K. So what this is dependent on, oh, this is really small, I apologize for this. 
is your VRAM. So VRAM is basically your RAM. Okay, let me open my tax manager just to explain this. So performance. So we have, you see here, I have 32 RAM. And then down on my GeForce, I have 11. So 11 plus that will bring me up to 43. I minus six from that. And that's the number I get to use. 27 would be about, I'd say, how much VRAM I can use because you don't want to use if you max it out and you say hey take all take all of it then your game will crash or something will go wrong so you always want to buff yourself six gigabytes is usually a good thing if you're running a higher end PC smaller MP smaller computers I'd say you probably want to max your thing out at 75% to 80% so if you got one gigabyte you only want to use 800 megabytes so to say then so you're gonna go in here once you figure out what you can probably fit in your memory. I just set it to 2K. Uh, you can set a few different options here. Um, I normally just leave it on the default option. You can go into more advanced. And then of course there's a generate button, but uh, for some reason it doesn't want to show me the generate button. So we'll just exit that for now. You'd go through generate your text and usually it takes I'd say maybe five minutes tops it could be pretty long depending on your computer the long one though is when you get this guy running when you get the actual low generator running this guy is gonna give you the option on what areas in Skyrim and the DLCs you want to generate for and it goes through all the stuff so it says hello here's how you use it and then okay you get the check boxes so these are all things you got the DLCs it may be a little bit weird because you say what's Jafet's folly but it's you can see it's related to the Skyrim ESM so you know it's part of the game and this will also add uh, compatible mods so say you download a mod and it has its own world map it should also appear in an option here you get the easy options here for low medium high and then of course there's the more advanced options just click which one you want on your PC when you're getting started and then if you really want to get into the nitty bitty after you let that guy generate, you can go into the advanced and you can learn how to properly create logs. But that gets a little bit more advanced. But essentially once you run the text gen and then once you run the load generation, start up your game, uh, go to white one fields or somewhere or go to white run and just look at the map. See if you notice any glitching textures or anything like that. Uh, sometimes if you run the uh, load generator multiple times, it'll create conflicting files. And it tells you basically how to clean that out in, of course, the logs. But you should see right away that your distant logs are way better. You should be able to see structures from further away and other things like that where you previously couldn't. So hopefully this guy gives you a quick insight on how to just get Dino Logs set up for the first time. I'm not going of course into the extremely advanced stuff that you can get into with this guy. Like just going into some of this, you got all these log files that you can read. There's the scripts, so these are the tools that actually get run when you're running the other tools. Yep, that's that's right. And then you got all the manuals in here for different things. You got the SSE manuals, you got the Enderall manuals for the Enderall mod, you have the normal default Skyrim. And of course the VRs in there mixed too, so it gets it gets crazy. So when you're first starting out, just go through. The hardest part you're gonna encounter is making sure you put in this SSE if you're running on the special edition, of course. If you're not, this TS5, and then of course TS5 VR if you're running the VR. That's the hardest trick of this. Don't just right click on this one, go properties, because as you can see you don't get the target. And that's what you need the shortcuts for. So hopefully if I've explained everything, uh, I've told you you should put it on the drive. So don't put it anywhere, but just on your main drive. You don't need to put it in your Skyrim folder. Then the next step is create the shortcut, put in the tag for your game version, then run. And then after you run your text gen, run your LODs because you need your textures to be put into your LOD. And Next gen works if you added stuff too. So if you get um, the higher res lods or better distant lods, mods, 
you need to run your text gen again and then you need to rerun your lot again and you should be able to make multiple as long as you're going through normally it should just replace the other textures and then you shouldn't have any issues of course there's ways to uh, delete distant lots and regenerate them if you do run into conflicts but hopefully I've given you guys what you need to know um, if you have any questions of course as always just type them down below and I'll be hopefully there to answer all right thank you for watching